Now we're going to talk about the MIPS instructions. We're going to go into details about them, show you some examples, and tell you how they work. So MIPS instructions take a general three operand format. That is, they're written like this, operation, destination, source one, source two. The way to think about this is as follows. We have some operation, so maybe this is addition or subtraction, and we're going to store the results into a destination. This is where the answer, or the results of the computation is going to go. And what do we use for the computation? Well, we use source one and source two. So this format here says basically do the operation on the two sources and store the result into the destination. So let's take a look at some examples. Here's an addition. So we're doing add A, B, C. What this is going to do is it's going to take B and C as the sources. These are registers. And it's going to store the results of, a plus B, of B plus C into register A. Here's another example. Note this has an I in it. So this is add I. So this is an immediate value. And instead of having two registers, it takes one register as the source and one constant or immediate value as the source. And so this is going to do B plus 12 and store it into A. So here the I in, it, in the instruction stands for immediate. The immediate value is a constant value that gets added right in. And of course, subtraction looks the same. Subtract A, B, C is going to do B minus C and store it into A. Now what if we want to do something more complex? So there's no instruction for this right here. There's no instruction that says take two registers, add them together, then subtract the result of two other registers added together. So in order to do this complex instruction, we need to split it into multiple simple instructions. So first we're going to do the G plus H, then we're going to do I plus J, and then we're going to do the subtraction. So let's do the G plus H. So here's the instruction we're going to use for this. We're going to add T0 G H. So T0 here is a temporary register. This register is going to temporarily store the results of this part of the computation. We're then going to do the same part for the second half. So we'll have another temporary register which stores the results of I plus J. And then finally, we'll do the subtraction. So here's our last instruction. Subtract the two temporary values and store it into F. So when we have lots of complex operations, we're going to get lots and lots of instructions and lots of temporary variables. And these temporary variables are stored in registers, just like the source and destination, so we need to make sure these all fit in our register file. So here's a question. Of the instructions I showed you here, which ones do not need to specify three registers? Well, take a look at these, and what we see is that add i is the one here. So add and subtract both specify two source registers, one here and one here. But add i only specifies one source register and uses this constant as the rest. So add i only specifies two registers and then has this constant or immediate field for the last part. So now let's take a look at some of the actual MIPS instructions. Here they are their color-coded blue for data operations, purple for data transfer, and red and orange for sequencing. And we have here is we list the function, that is the name of the instruction, an example of the instruction, so the actually how you write it, and then the effect the instructions have. And if you look at the sample code we had before, this is very similar. So in the sample code we had some data transfer, we had some sequencing, and we had some data operations. So these are the same sort of instructions as we saw in the example before, but these are the ones that are actually the way MIPS works. So let's walk through some of them. So for the data operations, these are arithmetic, so addition, subtraction, and logical. And here you can see them. So here's the add instruction that we saw before, add R1, R2, R3. What does it do? Well, R1 equals R2 plus R3. Here's add immediate. We also have logical instruction, so here's and. So and looks just like add, except instead of re returning the results of adding R2 and R3, it does a logical and of the two of them. Similarly, we have and immediate, or and I. And just like add I up above, and I takes oops, destination register, one source register, and then this immediate field or constant, and it does an and of the source register and the immediate field or constant. So there's a very strong pattern between all of these instructions. The next set to look at is data transfer. So these are for loading data from the memory into the register file or storing it from the register file back into memory. And we have several of these. So load word, here's the load word instruction, and it takes a one register here, which is going to be the destination, so we're loading from memory into this destination, and then one register here, which is the source address and an offset. And we can see what this instruction does. 
it's going to put into that register the data that was at memory location pointed to by the second register plus this offset. It's going to add the two of these together and load that location. We also have sequencing instructions. Sequencing instructions have conditional branches, that is, if something is greater than, less than, or equal, and unconditional branches, which just jump all the time regardless. So here these are. So we have branch on equal. This branch on equal is going to check if two registers are equal, and if they are, it's going to jump to this new location. And that's exactly what the description says. If R1 equals R2, then we go to that location. We also have jump. Jump just says jump to that location, and it will go to that location regardless of anything else. So this is an overview of the instructions that we have in MIPS, and there's more details easily found online or in the book. So now let's talk a little bit about registers in MIPS, because I've talked about these registers, but we haven't said what they look like in MIPS. So MIPS has 32 general purpose registers. Here's the picture of them. So we've got 32 of these slots, and each one is 32 bits wide. So each register can hold 32 bits, 32 ones and zeros of data. When we talk about the register files, we talk about them either as R0 through R31, or sometimes we use $0 and $31. Either convention is fine. The values for instructions must come from these registers. So when you do an addition or subtraction, you need to have the data you're going to use in the register file. Some of these register files are special. So you'll notice here in the picture I drew, I put a 0 in R0. And that's because R0 is always 0. It's hardwired to 0. You can't store any other value in it. Other registers are used for special things as well. So R29 and 30, the last two registers, are used for function calls. And we'll learn all about that in the next lecture. In addition to the register file, MIPS has a few special registers. So the PC, or the program counter, is a register which keeps track of the current instruction. That's how the program knows where it is in the program. There are some other ones for multiplication, floating point, control registers, but we're not going to go into the details of those. So two very important things to remember here. All the values for instructions need to come from registers, and R0 is always 0. So with that in mind, what does the following instruction do? Add R3, R1, R0. Well, this instruction effectively moves R1 to R3. And the reason it does that is the instruction here says put into R3 R1 plus R0. But since R0 is always 0, this is the same thing as saying just put R1 into R3. So this is the same as moving R1 to R3 because we're just adding 0 to R1 and storing it in R3. So because we know R0 is always 0, we can make a move instruction which moves data between registers without having to do anything special. Now here's a question about register ordering. How do I just store the results of A plus B into C? And here's where my registers are. So R1 is A, R2 is B, and R3 is C. Well, we're going to do add R3, R2, R1. And let's take a look at this. So the format we have is operation, destination, source 1, source 2. And what this does is it takes source 1 and source 2, applies the operation to them, and stores it into the destination. Now for this example here, what we want to do is we want to do add R3, R1, R2. That is, we want to add A and B and store them to C. But I didn't give you that as one of the choices here. However, since additive, adding is commutative, that's exactly the same as doing it in the opposite order. So saying add R2, R1 into R3. So this was the right answer because adding is commutative, it's the same as this answer here. Here's a question about a complex function. So how many extra or other or temporary registers do I need to calculate this complex function? I want to store into R5, R5 plus R6 plus R7. Well, the answer here is we don't need any. And we can get away with this because we can use R5 to hold the temporary results. So with first operation, we can do R5 plus R6 and put this into R5. Then we can add R7 to that and put it back into R5. So we're accumulating or building up the result in R5, so we don't need any temporary registers. 